Hi, I'm Charles. Welcome back to Work In Workout. Today we're looking at deadlifts and we're looking at the difference between a straight bar deadlift and a hex or trap bar deadlift, as you can see to my side. In this video, I'm going to show you how the benefits of using each one work and how it works different muscle groups and how you might want to then for make your decision between a straight bar and a hex bar for doing your deadlifts. Before we get into the video, uh, do drop a quick like, especially if you find the content uh, useful, um, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's have a look at the two different bars. Okay, here on my left, we have a straight bar. Uh, this one is one I use here at home at the work in workout uh, home gym. Uh, and uh, as part of the setup I've got here, it's actually, uh, I think I've said in previous videos, it's a uh, 28 millimeters uh, circumference. It's actually um, 28, yeah, it's a, well, it's a 28 milli millimeter diameter, uh, actually, um, as opposed to a standard bar, which you can see behind me, which is the black one, that's 25 millimeter that's the uh, length uh, from side to side on the circle on the bar um, 28 millimeters, millimeters is pretty good because it's pretty sturdy you might be used to using an Olympic bar which is 50 millimeters um, the uh, part where the weights go on on top um, this one's about I'm about five about five eight so this one's about my height here we've got a much shorter hex bar or trap bar some people like to call them um, and as you can see, the makeup of this bar is very different. Um, so this one, as you can see, has got a hexagonal shape. Let me just put this bar to one side. Okay. As you can see, this one's got a hexagonal shape. Um, you can grip it from slightly high up on these bars here, which is my preferred grip, because I've got lower back issues. Um, but you can also flip it onto the other side. Gives you a bit more ground clearance when you're loading up your weights. And you can actually grip it from here. You stand inside, uh, inside uh, the bar. And what's good about this one is it keeps the weights more aligned to your center of gravity. So that's a major difference. With the straight bar, uh, you have to pull the weight in a straighter line up vertical as you can, but you have to um, counterbalance that weight as you're pulling by sometimes leaning back. There is an advantage to that because it does then help to work and stretch some additional muscle groups. But in the hex bar deadlift, whether you it flipped this way or the other way, um, the motion of pulling is more vertical, it's more straight up. So there's less pressure going on your lower back. I'll show you a demonstration of the actual pulls in a second. We'll do that outside because it's a nice day today. So why not do it with the birds chirping, the sunshine and the greenery in the background. Uh, so I'll just do a demonstration for you in a moment. But at a basic level, that's the main difference between these two bars. Uh, you've got your grip differences. Um, in fact, another thing to think about actually is the grip. Um, so when you're using, I'll start with the hex bar because it's here and I'll show you the straight bar. With the hex bar, um, and we'll do some close-ups for you as well, um, your grip, You've got your hands like this uh, on either side of you. Obviously, just a bit wide and short width apart because obviously you stand inside the bar. Um, so as you lift, uh, your grip is actually a fairly natural grip, actually, uh, for carrying things. If you think about you know, how you're carrying bags and, and things with handles, it's typically uh, in this sort of configuration uh, and at the side of your body. Um, so if I just do a demonstration of that, there you can see me holding the bar uh, with a fairly neutral uh, looking grip. Let's now look at the straight bar. Okay, so the grip with the straight bar will be out in front of you as I discussed. And what you want to do is you want to get your shins and your, in fact, your knees right over the bar so that when you pull up and your legs straighten and they move backwards, and they move backwards, the pulling motion is straight the whole time. If you feel you have to go out too far in front of you, 
that's going to put way too much pressure on your lower back um, trying to adjust to the movement of that weight and could cause you an injury so what you want to do is have that bar as close to your body as possible uh, when you start that pulling motion and try and pull straight up and as we were talking about grip you can see my grip here um, is in front of me my hands are turned this way with my palms facing in my knuckles facing outwards um, i actually find that's a harder grip to make so therefore um, a straight bar grip for me certainly um, is more strain on my grip strength so if you're trying to work your grip strength um, it's, it's a really good exercise for that and if you don't have lower back issues like me then a straight bar is also going to work um, the, the lower back muscles as well um, so there's some really good benefits to using that straight bar so I actually transitioned from using a straight bar because of lower back issues uh, in fact it's, it's a funny story the way it started I, I started off doing no exercise and had lower back issues somebody said go to the gym so I did and they said uh, strengthen your back dead this was a really good full body and back exercise obviously if you're doing it safely um, so I began by doing a deadlift but then I found that the stronger I got I was lifting heavier weights and it was putting more weight on my lower back so um, I was I talked to a PT uh, that's uh, Encore PT uh, you can check him out on Instagram at Encore PT uh, he actually advised me to actually use a hex bar so when I used to go to the gym uh, I then uh, started to use a hex bar which gave a lot less stress on my lower back but what I found was, it, therefore, because it wasn't putting that stress on my lower back, I actually wasn't working that muscle. Um, and I, even though it's a weak part of my body, therefore I need to work it for it to get stronger. So I actually went back to doing a straight bar deadlift. But I still love my hex bar deadlift. Um, so actually what my advice to you would be um, is to actually use both types of deadlifts if you've got access to both types of bars, because they both give you uh, different types of... Uh, of benefits that you can really benefit from. Now you can go heavier with a hex bar. Um, I'd say in the region of anything between 20 to 30 percent. Um, it's a bit more like a um, decline leg press um, in terms of the motion, just pushing against the ground and pushing up. Like I say, less strain on the lower back. Um, with uh, the straight bar, you know, it's a slightly different movement. They're both full body workouts. They both work the upper body and you can feel it in your chest, in your scapula, pecs. You have to keep everything tight. So your core and your abs, you're working all of those muscles all the way up. You've got to squeeze the glutes at the top of the motion. Um, so there's so many muscles that you work with both of these. Um, although it is a bit harder work, I find, with a straight bar. Um, so, but because it's harder work, I can't go as heavy. Um, so for vanity, you can go with a hex bar and you can uh, you know, add on an extra 20-30% if you can handle it. Um, but to work additional muscle groups, I find the straight bar works. So in summary, um, if you've got lower back issues but you still want to do your deadlift, I'd say go for the hex bar. Uh, if you're in good health um, and you're not too concerned with showing really high numbers on your, on your, on your deadlift, then use a the straight bar. Ultimately, you might come to the same conclusion that I've come to, which is actually there's a lot of benefit in using both. This is the straight bar deadlift. Feet kept shoulder width apart. Arms just outside the feet. Pull straight up. Lock out at the top of the motion. Lower gently. Knees over the bar, neutral back, chin up, eyes straight. Keep a neutral strength central line by keeping the bar as close to the body as possible. Lock out at the top and keep your glutes tight as well. The overhand grip is feet shoulder width apart, arms just outside of your feet. If you push your arms wider, and your feet with a wider stance, this is called the sumo grip. A mixed grip is where you alternate your hold grip. This is where you have palms facing in and palms facing out. Some people may opt for this in order to go heavy, but it really does depend on preference whether you choose a mixed grip or an overhand grip. As is customary with 
deadlift motions, drag the heels into the ground, neutral back, straight spine, chin up, eyes forward. This is the hex bar or trap deadlift. Feet inside and shoulder width apart. Grip the middle of the knurling on each handle. Pull straight up. This motion is much like a leg press. Neutral spine. Straight back. With the bar in this configuration, with the handles turned down, you have to reach slightly lower in order to raise the bar. This gives an increased range of motion for all of the leg muscles involved in the lift and more activation of the lower back in this movement. As a side note, it's also slightly easier to load the weights onto the bar. Okay, so just to recap on the bars themselves, uh, if you're looking to purchase one, what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go and check out uh, which bar is suitable for you. Um, if we're talking about a standard bar, this is a non-Olympic bar. In fact, it's not a standard bar. Um, it's more of a standard bar in terms of it's a straight bar, but um, a standard bar is 25 millimeters. This one is 28. Uh, the price I paid for it, and it's a solid metal, so it's not hollow. Uh, it's a solid metal bar, um, and this one cost about 20 pounds. So in dollars, it'd be probably something quite similar. Um, but the prices really can vary, so do check which one suits your budget. Um, and as you can see in height, it's about the same height as me. This one over here um, is a standard bar size, so it's a little bit narrower than this 28mm one. Um, this one weighs 16 kilograms. This one was 9 kilograms. So 16 kilograms over here. The full size trap bar, which is Olympic and 50mm um, diameter on the bar. Um, this, so this one cost me about £90, um, the full size Olympic one is going to cost a little bit more than that so depending on what your setup, your home gym setup looks like, you know, you might want to go for a 28mm or a standard which is, could be 25mm um, or if you want to go for a standard trap bar or an Olympic trap bar, whichever one suits you, but check out the link uh, to browse for options that suit your budget and your taste and your needs and your setup. Um, but yeah, those are two different uh, uh, bars. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you drop a like, that'll really help this channel grow and the YouTube algorithm. So I do appreciate that. Um, do share if you found the content interesting. Maybe you know somebody that's working on the deadlifts or thinking about which bar to buy or which bar to use in their gym uh, when the gym's finally reopen. Um, and also subscribe so that next time new content comes out on this channel, you'll be the first one to know. Um, again, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Working Workout TV. Also check me out on Instagram at Working Workout TV. That's Working Workout TV on Instagram, where I post some really interesting content.